Hello, internet friends. Today I'm gonna show you five cool things you didn't know could make your life easier in Photoshop. I'm Kara Plichinich, and I make it easy to learn Photoshop, photography, and more with fun, project-based classes available whenever you are. Find them all at karaplichnich.com along with the free creative toolkit to jumpstart your next project. Here we go with number five, the ability to increase your font preview size. When you have the type tool in Photoshop and you come up here to the menu and you're looking at your different type, you can see a preview here. However, it can obviously be hard to see. You can change the size that displays here by coming to the type menu and choosing font preview size and you can change it, and this cracks me up, to large, extra large, or perhaps huge. Then the next time you access the type menu, you will see a larger preview, making it easier to choose the perfect font. Number four, changing your ruler to percentage. Let's say you're working on a project and you want to divide your page, your document, into, let's say, thirds. If we turn on our rulers by pressing Command or Control R, we can see that my rulers right now are set to display in inches. So this document measures seven inches wide. I did well at math in school, but still I don't wanna take seven inches, divide that by three, and then try to calculate where exactly I would put my guides. So my tip is that if you come up and right click or control click on the ruler itself, you will see that you actually have a number of options, including percent. So now with the ruler displaying percent, it's easy to draw out a guide. So if I come over here to my ruler on the left and I drag it out, if I want it in thirds, I can just drag until the info display tells me that this is at 33.3%. I could drag out another guide to 66.6%. Or if I wanted this in fourths, I could drag out the same guide. So I would get 25, 50, and 75. If you hold the shift key, it will help with precise guide placement. Now that you know this, you may never go back to inches or pixels again. Number three, is taking advantage of Photoshop's built-in color themes. I have a more detailed video on this that I will link to below, but for now, the quick of it is this. Under Window Libraries, this will show you a panel of different assets that you can collect over time. So you might have things here that you didn't even know you had, or maybe you've never used your libraries before. So before exploring the color themes, I find it helpful to first open your libraries panel and click create new library. So we'll call this my new color themes and click create. So now we're gonna go to my web browser. And here I'm just gonna type color.adobe.com. Now you'll have to log in with your Creative Cloud account, but once you log in, there's a number of things you can do here, which I explain in more detail in the other video. But for right now, just know that you can create a lot of different color themes here, including one of my personal favorite techniques is to click explore and then you can actually just type in whatever you're looking for right here. So I could type in something like coffee. And when I press enter or return, I'm gonna get different color themes that are either created by other people, this is crowdsourced basically, or you can see that Adobe is gonna pull its own stock photos and extract images, or excuse me, color themes from those stock photos. So if I decide that I like this color theme and I wanna add it to my library, up here in the top right corner, we wanna make sure that we've designated which library we wanna add it to. 
So I have a lot of libraries here, but you can see here's the one that we just created. So I'll make sure that's selected. And then I can just come over here and click add to library and that's it. And now when we go back to Photoshop, you can see that this is instantly available here to use on anything I want in Photoshop. So check out the other video linked below for more details on this. Number two, take control of your info bar at the bottom of your document window. When you're viewing your image in a document tab, there are lots of ways that you can know in a snap what general size of image you might be working with. So for example, up here, this tells me that I'm currently viewing my image at 25% of its actual size. So that gives me some idea about the size of this particular image. Without having to open the image size window, there is still another way to get a handle on what size your image currently is. And that is down here at the bottom of the document window. Over here, it displays the current zoom percentage, which we can also see up here. But right here, it shows us the actual document size in terms of how much file space it takes up on your hard drive. That also gives us an idea about how big this image might be, but it's not very specific. For more details, we can click this little menu right here, and you'll see that there are a number of different types of information we can display here. My personal favorite is to choose document dimensions. So we can see that this image is roughly 3,600 pixels by 4,600 pixels, and it's currently at 72 pixels per inch. Now it's showing me pixels because a moment ago, I changed my ruler to pixels. But if I wanted to see this in inches, I can just press Command or Control R to bring my ruler back up, right click or control click and choose inches. And now I can see that this document is just over 50 by 64 inches at 72 pixels per inch. This makes it easy to keep tabs on my image size with a simple glance. And finally, number one, the ability to create a layer from layer effects. So for example, let's say we're working on a mock-up and this is a front view scene and I've got this cactus here. And if we look at everything else in the scene, we can see that there is a subtle cast shadow coming off to the right. Now this cactus doesn't have that. Rather than building a cast shadow completely from scratch, what we can do is create a simple drop shadow on this cactus. Of course, this creates a drop shadow, which is completely different than a cast shadow. So what we're gonna do is right click or control click on the drop shadow effect in the layers panel and choose create layer and it's gonna give us a warning, we're gonna click okay. And I just think this is so cute. Photoshop names it with the name of the layer. So the layer was called cactus, so this is cactus's drop shadow. So if I target this layer, I can now go about free transforming to distort this shadow to get it to be at roughly the same angle as the existing shadows in the scene. Then we could come over, lower the opacity so that it's similar to the existing shadows. We could add a quick blur with two points. So this first blur would maybe not have any additional blur. And perhaps this outer blur would be more extreme. Not bad, finally, let's add a layer mask. I'll grab the gradient tool with a default foreground color to transparency. And then I'm just gonna come in over here and do something like that to soften the shadow as it gets farther away from the cactus. That was a whole lot of demonstration just to show you how helpful it can be sometimes to be able to detach the effects from the layer that they were initially applied to. That does it for five quick things to make your Photoshop life easier. I've got another five things ready to share next time, so hit subscribe and I will see you then.